Right, I'd like to thank everybody for joining again in the uh, WKS podcast. This time I'm with John Hutchins from a band called um, DM Streets. How are you doing? Yeah, Craig, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Um, do you want to start off by telling us a bit about yourself, where you started musically? Yeah, I started when I was about 14 years old, um, picked up a guitar. Um, we used to have a farm up in uh, Exmoor, um, middle of nowhere and consequently there wasn't a lot to do so um, I figured getting into music might be a sort of good way of um, you know uh, learning something new a um, bit of a hobby interest um, I was sort of happy into country and western music at the time which was uh, a bit unusual for someone my age given it was like the mid 70s um, and the sort of uh, the punks were starting to take off um, and it was around about that time really that um, you know with, with punk it really opened up my eyes um, and then obviously with the, um, the, the star scene later on uh, and I, I really sort of wanted to get involved sort of more on a, on a more serious basis I guess. Um, it took me a while to um, get a, a band on the go but we did start one um, when we moved to Cornwall in 1982. It was a band called Jailhouse and who I believe uh, are probably still going, probably one of the longest running bands in history I, I guess. <laughs> um, but they're still out there somewhere. Uh, and from then, uh, I moved on to a band called uh, John and Blue Lights, which is based in Bodmin. Uh, we did, um, you know, covered most of the sort of Bodmin area and we even travelled as far as Weybridge on occasions. Um, but that was all, all covers, etc. Um, and then I sort of, we left that, had enough of that for a time. And then I joined a band called Yellowstone, who were a mod band, did their own songs. Uh, and that was a quite exciting time, but it was only a brief um, dalliance with them because the lead guitarist um, decided to move away uh, and the, the band sort of temporarily folded. Uh, and I was sort of kicking my heels for a little while, really. And okay. I saw an advert for um, a band looking for a lead singer guitarist. Um, uh, and that was at the M Street. Uh, and I applied and, and got the job. Right. So what uh, what sort of genre is the M Street then? Well, Holy and Solely Star. Uh, a sky okay. reggae band we are um, we write uh, a lot of our own songs um, we also perform a lot of the sort of the the, the standard fare you know like gangsters specials Mike Brooks and Cairo um, bit of Dexys a uh, bit of Inspiral Parfits in there as well uh, and some of the old school ska stuff from the Scatterlights you know right. like Phoenix mm-hmm. City. so yeah it's quite a broad spectrum really um, it's difficult to get um, your own songs known really um I mean, we've been going for about two or three years now, uh, and luckily we've built quite a, a good following, uh, and people are getting used to our own numbers now. So we we're kind of reintroducing new numbers in the hope that over a period of time we will just wholly and solely just kind of do our own stuff. Right, superb, superb. So, um, how many are there of you in the band then? We're seven in the band altogether. Uh, there's myself, John, as you know, um, lead guitarist, or sorry, rhythm guitarist uh, and lead vocalist. Uh, we've got John Wright, the bass guitarist, um, Tracy Underwood, um, absolutely brilliant on the trumpet. And we've got a guy called um, Andy Keith Clark, who um, actually started the band. Um, he's a very, very prolific songwriter in his own right. Um, he, he's written them some amazing star songs, uh, which are some of which we do. And he, he does his own um, solo albums as well. Right. The drummer called Sam Downing, um, possibly one of the best reggae star drummers in Cornwall, I reckon. Um, used to be in a band called Honey, uh, very able. Um, very young guitarist called Nathan Fennell, early 20s, absolutely superb. And uh, a saxophone player, Marcus Alfred, um, right. lives down in Perrinpoth, just recovering from COVID. So we're just like wishing him all the best. Yes. Uh, he had yeah. a bit of a tough time. So, um, you know, hopefully he'll be back on the mm. sax soon. Mm. Uh, we're very lucky. Our eighth member is uh, Laurie Seymour, who does our, our sound. He's um, such a big big entity uh you know obviously we do need to have a sound engineer so um yeah i, I would always recommend one if anybody's starting out in a band super yeah yeah um so who's your main sort of um lyricist then who who comes up with the lyrics for your you know your own stuff my own stuff um i i don't really have any sort of order of writing um uh, from my point of view i tend to write lyrics generally first um and I can have like three or four different songs on the go at the same time, or sorry, mm-hmm. two different types of um, um, lyrics on the go at the same time. And I like to sort of, sort of um, pick the guitar up, the acoustic guitar up on my own, 
and I'll just go through a few uh, core progressions. Mm. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably sort of link it to sort of one of the um, lyrics that I've written. Um, invariably, a song will come out of it. So I don't find it very um, easy, to be honest. Uh, I'm right. You have to focus. Uh, they do take a long time to come, but eventually they, they do come. And uh, I have to say, I'm usually quite pleased with what I've written. Um, and it's nice to present it to the band. Um, it's even better when you get good feedback from them, you know, right. and, and when you finally get to perform it live, you know, that's really the sort of cherry on the top. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. So, what what um, what musicians do you admire then, yourself personally? Um, well, I'm a big fan of well, Blur. I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, and also the Inspiral Carpets, Smiths, etc. Um, but I'll probably um, ultimately Dave Gilmore um, from Pink Floyd, probably the, the greatest guitarist um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I know a lot of star fans. <laughs> And most fans will probably attack me for that, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's normal enough. for me. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So, so as a band, how have you guys coped with the lockdown setting? Um, well, we, it's been difficult. Um, we managed to squeeze a couple of rehearsals in between the um, the last two lockdowns, um, and, and it was quite surreal because obviously we are at sort of social distance anyway, um, mm. and we had to because um, there's seven of us. We had to have, well, we had the boxing club in Bobham, which is huge. So, um, yeah, it, it wasn't sort of, um, yeah, it wasn't ideal. Um, but we, we sort of talk regularly. Uh, we've got Facebook um, Messenger uh, that yeah. we regularly communicate. So um, we, we've bandied some ideas around. But I know Andy's still busily writing at the moment. Um, Nathan, our lead, lead guitarist, he's, uh, yeah, he's always earning um, practicing. And every okay. time we see him, he, he, he just comes on to, you know, another level. So it's going to be quite exciting when we all get back to it again properly. Brilliant. Yes, yeah. you know. Fantastic. Um, have you got any sort of an EP or singles out there at the moment? No, we, we were planning to uh, do an album, uh, which was going to be released sort of around about this time. Um, but obviously, COVID just totally put a sort of dampener on that. So um, we've got all the tracks uh, for that. We've got about 12 tracks all together. So I'm hoping... You know, when the lockdown's lifted, uh, at some point we will be sort of right. at least getting an album out, but an EP in the first instance, um, because obviously we need to get our name out there, and we're quite keen to get onto the, um, the festival circuit, because I think that's a kind of our natural territory, or it right. will be. Right. Um, so you need to have something behind you to, uh, uh, you know, to promote. Uh, we've got yeah. uh, a, a very good sort of Facebook page. And a, a good website yeah. as well, but um, you, you've got to have that EP and album to back up. Yeah, um, yeah. Have you have you got anything on YouTube? Any uh, live got performances? Yeah, there, yeah there, there is plenty of live performances on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, we played at um, uh, Alstock Festival a couple of years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, we also supported. Um, we're on the same bill with Madness um, back in 2018. Um, that was awesome. That was the House of Fun uh, weekender. Uh, okay, that, that yeah. was one one hell of an experience. Um, so those are the Brilliant. kinds of things. So yeah, it's all starting to kick in, but obviously COVID's put an end to all that. Yeah. Um, we've also yeah. got some good pubs that we play uh, and clubs like Five Degrees West in um, Falmouth and Bunters yeah. Bar. You know, there, there are sort of we, we frequent those. So looking forward to getting back to uh, yeah. some of those again. Yeah. No, that that'd be great. Absolutely brilliant. Um, What's the uh, what's the best bit of advice musically you've been given? Um, keep it simple, I think. Um, try not to get too complicated with things. Um, I mean, I'm an acoustic guitarist by by, by nature. Uh, I'm not a lead guitarist, um, and I, I think by you know keeping it simple, from my personal experience, it sort yeah. of gives me time to sort of think about the lyrics, think about singing, and becoming a you know. A, your own musician if you like um and then you can sort of move that over into a sort of band scenario uh, and you, you sort of come with a bit of a package i guess right right um so how do you feel this is quite an interesting thing how do you feel that the the internet has impacted on sort of music um i think it's um made it a lot better, I know from my point, it's, it's made music much more accessible, um, without a doubt. Um, this is like the the medium, like Andy Andy Clark, our um, keyboard player, he, he writes a lot of stuff, um, and he's just mm. put um, 
loads of stuff out, you know, on the um, on the internet. Mm. Um, and he actually makes a, oh, I would say he makes a reasonable income, but uh, I think he's, he's got some use for Spotify at the moment, okay. uh, and he's getting a bit of an income from that. I think it's different when you are a mainstream band uh, and you don't make quite so much money yes. from that. So yeah. there's a little yeah. bit of a you know, um, yeah. you know I mean, I'm, the likes of us, but not, not for them. I, I quite often think, well, you know, if it wasn't, what would we be like in the lockdown if it wasn't for the internet? You know, sort of musically, a lot of people are collaborating over the internet. Like you say, you can be in contact with your band members and, and fire sort of things across to them. You can mix them down, do all sorts of stuff. If, if it wasn't for that, you know, I, I can't, I don't know what musicians would be doing. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's definitely promoted to the, the music industry and it's managed to keep it going through, um, you know, with the COVID and, and, you know, the foreseeable future. I don't think things are going to change uh, for a little while now. So, you know, I think in a lot of respects, it's, it's um, you know, a lot of people have learned a lot of things over the last few years you know, or this year. Um, and, you know, I think it will be the done thing that, you know, in the future for recording, we'll just stay at home and do it. You know, what's the point in hiring a studio? You know, just having that one person who's got the confidence and the, and the knowledge to do that. Yeah. And unfortunately, we don't have that. Yeah. Um, so if if you and the band could open up for any any uh, artist or other band, you know, who would you like to open up for? Um, I think the band would agree it would probably be the specials, I think, um, without a doubt. Yeah, I, I think that would be the ultimate one to open up for. But, um, Brilliant. But failing that, the beat um, would be great. Madness would be absolutely awesome. We've done a bit with Madness already. Um, but yeah, okay. that will be the, the ultimate. So um, yeah, you, you never know. Um, yeah, you never know. You never know. I mean, we. Uh, so I'm down in Penzance, and it was a few years ago, probably five years ago, maybe something like that. The beat came down to the Acorn. Okay. Um, and it was when Rankin Roger and his son, I think, his son was just learning the ropes and going to take over. Yeah, we saw them in Bobbin. I think they performed. Right. So. Yeah, and it, it might have been the same tour. Yeah, what a fantastic gig that was. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was amazing. Really high energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Superb. No, they, they are a fantastic band. And um, yeah, obviously, we've got the specials there performing at one of us in uh, it's November, I believe. Right. So, um, you yeah, know, fingers crossed. Um, you know, we haven't been asked to play there yet. So um, I'm, I'm waiting by the phone. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do you actively, um, at this moment, are you actually actively seeking gigs or is it, is it something you're going to wait a little longer until COVID's gone? Yeah, we're definitely going to sort of uh, leave it for a little bit longer. I mean, obviously, there's going to be concerns with sort of pubs and clubs, you know, whether they're still going to be open or not, you know, in a few weeks, a few months' time, because yeah. everybody's struggling. Yeah. Um, what I'm hoping is that obviously through the summer, I, I think the way forward is going to be pop up festivals. Um, yeah. open air gigs um, and that's kind of where we want us to be focusing our sites on you know, where yeah. we can sort of yeah. capitalise on that if we can I, so yeah, yeah. We... I think that because when the, the pubs start to open again you know I mean there won't be a lot of money for them you know uh, to pay for bands I wouldn't have thought um, for a little while um, and, and a band like yourself with seven members all now you know it's going to have to go for the festivals aren't you really yeah, yeah, we will we, we'll definitely struggle with that. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we certainly don't do it for the money. Uh, obviously, you know, we sort of pay for our costs for petrol and you know, studio hire, etc. But yeah, um, yeah. no, I think a lot of bands are going to have to sort of um, bite the bullet and, and do a lot of very, very low price gigs, um, yeah. if not some free gigs, you know, which I'll, I'll be happy to do. That will be with me. Um, but just to sort of, um, you know, to get back on track again. But, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a long time before there's any element of yeah. normality. And if yeah. you can focus on getting an album together or an EP in between, you know, that would be great for me. Um, you know, as long as we're doing something musically together, yeah. um, you know, I'll be happy. Brilliant. All right, final question. I ask everybody this question. Um, is there anybody you'd like to thank for you being here musically now? Um. Very good question. That um, can be anybody. I have a whole anybody. range, a whole range of answers from people, from you know their mom and dads through to I don't know uh, Frank Zappa. You know the whole 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. It's, that's a really good question, actually, because I, I would say now, um, where Paul McCartney, at the time when I was younger, I was a massive fan of the Beatles. Um, Paul McCartney was a huge influence, but uh, it sounds awful, but I'm actually not very keen on him quite so much now. Obviously, what he's done with the Beatles is fantastic. You never take that away. But I think as my kind of musical taste has matured and moved on, right? Um, I, I don't think his has quite moved on in the sort of, sort of same you know, it still does the same old sort of stuff, if you like. And there's yeah. stuff we get shot down by a lot of people from that. But like, you know, he's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. He's an absolute icon. But yeah, I, I think at the time, you know, when I was sort of younger, uh, the Beatles, uh, McCartney, his, his songwriting, everything, you know, I, I would say that he was the one that probably, you know, well, I was going to say got me where I got today, but <laughs> made yeah, me into yeah. a musician where I am now, if you like. So, um, yeah, and I, I think it's important important to acknowledge um, influences, you know, even for change, you know, uh, it's, it's an important part of the, the musical journey, really, and just open yourself okay. up and expose yourself up to, as much as you can, musically, that is. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, nobody else you want to thank then? So you're all right thanking Paul McCartney and the Beatles? Yeah, but, but yeah, we'll leave it with him, you know, if yeah, I get acknowledgement play. from him, I'd be happy with that. So, uh, but uh, yes, yeah, like I say, it's definitely not a criticism of him, but I'm, I'm, I'm a huge so much of a huge fan now as, as yeah. I was then, but uh, you know, still great. I, do, I think I listened to his, uh, is it, uh, McCartney three that's out recently. Um, oh, okay, uh, you might if you can find it, well, you will find it. Have a look, have a listen to that, it's quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, he, he was great with um, I mean, uh, Ram was his first album he did when he left the Beatles, which um, yeah, it is, it's, um, I don't think there's many stuff, um albums out there but it's well worth a listen if you ever get a chance mm. and then obviously with what he did with wings was um, fantastic as well but after that um you know it went a bit awry from my point of view. <laughs> yes yeah uh look john thanks so much for giving me the time and um good luck with the plans after lockdown you know and hopefully we'll we'll hear an album and see you live yeah, I'll definitely send a, an album out to you to so have, have a play, have a listen. Lovely, a, lovely. A take. But that's no, been good talking to you, Craig, and uh, hopefully catch up with you again soon, mate. Yeah, you take care. Cheers. You too. Thanks very much. Bye.